Joining us now, my old friend, Professor Lawrence Tribe, man who basically dominated constitutional law at Harvard University for a very long time. He has argued and won 35 cases in the front of the United States Supreme Court. Uh, Larry, it's great to see you here today. And I want to start with the question that Tim Alberta asked. Um, was it worth it what the, what the DOJ and the FBI did yesterday? Uh, and is it worth pursuing Trump, if, even though if you think you've committed crimes and even though you think he should be prosecuted in principle, is it worth it given the potential political costs? Well, it's good to see you, Jim. And I think the answer is compared to what? You know, if we don't hold him accountable, if we say that you can take classified material and use it for your own benefit, you can foment a riot, give aid and comfort to an insurrection, you know, insist on holding on to office no matter whether you win or lose, if we say that a coup is okay, insurrections are okay, crimes are okay if you're a former president, then we have really given up the American experiment. We have given up the rule of law. I think that is the highest price of all. That's what we cannot afford to do. And I'm glad that somebody as calm and centered as Merrick Garland has set aside the question, are they going to carry out their threats? Are they going to use even more violence? He's not asking himself that question. He's asking, do we have the goods? Has this guy committed crimes? Can we convince a federal judge that there is evidence of those crimes at Mar-a-Lago? If there is, and if any other citizen would be subjected to exactly this kind of treatment, can we afford a country in which we say, we look the other way because it's Donald Trump, because he has led a cult, because he has convinced lots of people, many of whom are armed and dangerous, to take his side against the side of law and democracy. If we do that, we are lost. So I think it's worth it, although I do not underestimate. I'm, I'm really not with Kurt Anderson in saying all is well, uh, there were only 12 old people gathered around Mar-a-Lago yesterday. I'm not willing to assume that, that these people don't mean what they say, but I think we cannot afford to give up. If Lincoln had given up, we would have had a nation half slave and half free. We just cannot afford to give up, even right. if the price is high. That's what so I think. So, so you you talked about Garland here, and it's it's a question I you know you said what he what he's done here is put aside those questions and and just stayed focused on the law, and that I think is 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 what we've been talking about for the last couple of days in, in trying to assess what he did here. I found it very frustrating uh, when you would hear people, mostly people on the left, who were you know kind of impatient with Garland uh, and and his kind of Delphic utterances about what he was going to do about January 6th and prosecuting Trump. People would be very impatient. He's not doing anything. They're not doing anything. We haven't seen signs of anything. The man just, why won't he do more? Why won't he move faster? And that goes up not just to the, to the, to the activist left, but goes all the way into the Biden White House. And I have to say that right now, in the context of what he did yesterday, it just it helps his credibility enormously to have been uh, have been judicious and have been patient and have taken his time when he takes a step like this. That's not going to placate people on the right. But for people of goodwill in the country who are looking on him, it seems to me that having been, as I said, patient and, 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 and methodical, that can only help when you decide to take a step like this. Well, I think that's true. But I, I would certainly lose credibility if I hid the fact that I was among the people uh, who expressed impatience. I knew that Merrick Garland was a man of principle. I knew, you know, having known him for 50 years, having taught him, yeah. having helped him select law clerks when he was a judge, I knew that he was not going to look the other way. But on the other hand, I'm a human being, too, and I was damn frustrated. I thought, why the hell can't he show some, show some thigh here? Can't he show some leg? Show us that he's doing something. Um, I'm glad I was wrong to be impatient. I'm glad that, as you say, uh, his methodical patience, the fact that he doesn't uh, doesn't show his passion, show his anger uh, about the violation of the laws of the country, but simply proceeds to find the evidence and see where it leads. I think, you know, I'm glad that that adds to his credibility now, because when you have the propagators of the big lie 
making up stuff about how oh the, the FBI must have planted evidence here. It's like their claim that it was really the liberals and and the uh, and Nancy Pelosi who planned to have the uh, January 6 insurrection and and endanger their own lives and the lives of the Capitol Police. I'm glad that all those people uh, are losing credibility. Of course, to the extent they're talking just to one another, there's nothing we can do to overcome it. That's that's why the death of truth is in some ways the most dangerous problem that we face now. People right. can just, you know, tell lies and there are millions of people who are ready to believe them no matter what. But we have to proceed on the premise that truth will, in the end, prevail. I, I have to believe that. Otherwise, you know, I would have wasted my life, and I don't want to believe I have. Neither do I. Um, so here's my question I asked Joyce Vance in the last hour, and I, I want you to, uh, to, there's, to, to I want to hear what you have to say about it. You know, there's been a lot of discussion uh, today about, given the unprecedented nature of what happened yesterday, and about, and given the firestorm that it ignited, that that yeah, again, people who are uh, people of goodwill. Uh, looking at, at the Justice Department and saying we must have transparency. The Justice Department needs to explain uh, what this is all about. What are they looking for? What are the what was the basis for this search warrant? They need an America Garland should hold a press conference. Uh, and there's another group of people who say, no, that's not how it works. There's a reason why the Justice Department shouldn't talk about ongoing investigations. Charge somebody, decline to charge somebody. If they charge, talk about it. If they don't charge, don't talk about it. Uh, but there's the, the, the people wanting transparency are coming from, in some cases, the right place. I'm not talking about people on the right who are making that argument in a bad faith way. What's your view about what the DOJ should do in terms of transparency and explaining what happened yesterday? I think Joyce Vance got it exactly right. It's not just a matter of, you know, following DOJ routine, burying your head in the sand and saying we don't care about the public hunger for transparency. There are good reasons. We saw in the case of Jim Comey, and the trouble he understandably and rightly got into for for violating those rules and telling all kinds of stuff about Hillary Clinton and how she perhaps wasn't chargeable but was grossly negligent. That's not what we should do. If we did that, then Trump and his acolytes would have a legitimate gripe. They would say, you haven't given us our day in court yet. You're trying us through press conferences. You shouldn't say what the uh, what the basis of, of these searches was, because we haven't had our day in court. The fact is that under the rules that we've got, Trump has the inventory of the search. If he right. wanted to, he could basically say, here's the stuff they grabbed. Here are the 12 boxes. Right. There's nothing in there that's dangerous or classified. And as some people have said, he should put up or shut up. But I think for uh, Merrick Garland to satisfy the public thirst for transparency at this point would be a terrible mistake. He would be pulling a Comey. And I, th I think that would be wrong. It would lead to justifiable complaints right. by Trump and really by everybody in the country who cares about fairness and justice. Well, of course, and I saw you, Mitch McConnell yesterday was saying, you know, Merrick Garland, explain yourself. And I swear to God, the minute that Merrick Garland explained himself, Mitch McConnell would say, you shouldn't be explaining yourself. That's what would happen. Um, I want right. to bring in our panel in a second, but I, ask, I want to ask you one last question, uh, Professor Tribe, because there was a lot of discussion yesterday about this provision uh, in the federal code. Uh, this the disqualification provision, uh, which basically said, you know, that that Trump, uh, if he were convicted of mishandling classified information, that he would be automatically disqualified from running for office. Some people said, hey, that's what this is all about. Other people said, no, that wouldn't apply. Uh, you know, people kind of fell over themselves in, in interpreting that that provision in the code one way or the other, kind right. of like that. And I, and I think you have a, a, a different point of view. Think that both sides are kind of misunderstanding what it's about. I think for clarity's sake, it would be good for you to talk about that. Sure. I think both sides are wrong. The people who say that, that that was the point of this raid are certainly wrong because there's at least a constitutional question of whether that disqualification could apply. It puts the cart before the horse to think that that's what Merrick Garland had in mind. It would only apply in very limited circumstances. And that's definitely not the point of this search. But the people who say, oh, no, you cannot add qualifications to the presidency. The Constitution says that all you need to do is be a resident, be a natural born citizen, be 35 years old. They are assuming that 
when somebody commits a particular kind of crime that Congress says is very special and disqualifies you, that that's like adding a qualification. But it isn't. It's not like saying, well, we're going to now say you have to have a college degree or you have to, you know, you have to have a record of of having paid your taxes in order to run for president. This isn't adding a qualification. It's saying that certain people otherwise qualified lose it if they commit a crime. After all, take the right. example of treason. Can you imagine that Congress mm -hmm. wouldn't have the power to say that somebody who was convicted of treason but then gets out after serving 20 years, 30 years? Can you imagine that the framers would have thought, oh, Congress has no power to say that a traitor cannot run for president? Of course it has that power. In fact, Jefferson in 1814 wrote a letter giving that example, saying the list of qualifications doesn't mean that the legislature doesn't have the power to say there are certain limited circumstances in which right. somebody gets disqualified. So right. it's a close question. And yeah. people who assume that you can't do that, I think, are making a mistake.